Now what will happen, you'll go out and you'll hit these spots, guys, and say it's been a couple weeks, you get out there, water temperature's now 53, 54 degrees. Now you want to start getting back in to that back end, looking for bull rushes, looking for concrete walls. Okay, long legs full of concrete walls, right? Retaining walls. Those crappie, along with those bass, will get right on the face of that. And they'll bed right on the face of that. It's just a vertical wall like this. And you would say, well, Seth, why are they right there? Okay, you guys familiar with the movie Jeremiah Johnson? Okay, when he stayed the night out there and it was cold, what do you do? Heat the rocks up. Cover the rocks in the dirt. Rocks retain the heat. Keep you warm, correct? Well, what's this doing? Sun beats on it all day long, retains the warmth. So they'll bed in these areas. The other thing that it does is this gives an area, you go there, how many times, guys, have you gone in the summertime and you see the carcasses from the dragonflies or the damselflies cluttered along those walls? Well, they climb up those to hatch out. So it's just a transport for those organisms down there that want to climb out and hatch. You'll see them on the docks and stuff, poles, pillars. But the main reason is because it's warm. Because now, they're back here at 54 degrees. They're not trucking all the way out there to that deeper water. They're going to be sticking around. Now, if a big storm came in and a cold front came in, dropped the temperature of the water down 4 or 5 degrees, some northerner came in, then I would say, yeah, they're going to swim all the way back out here. Or some place that's going to be, this is 4 feet, they're going to go try to find 6 or 8. Okay? But once they're up there, they're there. So now you're going to go along with your polarized glasses on, and you're going to see crappie on their beds. Now, you don't ever see shows on bed fish and crappie, but you see it on bass. It's just as exciting to go bed fish a crappie as it is to bed fish a bass, because it's the same principle. Take a 16th ounce jig head with a small little crappie tube, four pound test, you see that little dude there? You toss it up in there, drop it down in the nest, shake it, they come over to pull it off, you got the fish. Try not to keep those fish because that's when the reproduction's going on. Okay, catch and release at that time. Now with the big crappies, guys, what you'll find, they come in, they spawn, and the big females, and this is why people always catch, I don't care if it's bass, pike, walleye, whatever. I, I feel like a record when I do these seminars because I'm repeating myself, but it's the same principle. Those big fish come in, they spawn. And you say, well, Seth, I was fishing this brush pile here, and I caught just three of the biggest crappies I've ever caught, and I caught, I caught fish in there for a month, and it was in the spring of the year, okay? And you went up and you saw them on their beds. Now the fish you're going to see on the beds are going to be smaller, just like the bass. The smaller males are sticking around garden, they're fanning the eggs, etc. The females have in turn moved off. What the females do, there's going to be a two, three week period there, just like bass or any of them, where the, the females are post-spawn, they're tired, they're going to go out to deeper water and they're going to rest. This is why guys don't catch the big crappies in the summertime. So let's just say, let's just draw a cross-sectional like this, okay? And this area up here, remember where I talked about, just like this. I talked about where they were first start moving in, we had the dock and stuff. Well, this is just, say this is just that depth. This is that 12 to 20 feet or whatever, okay? Then, up in here was the, the rock wall where they were spawning at in three, four feet of water, right? Those big females pull out of there, make their way back, and they're sitting out here. Now, this may be 80 feet maybe 100 feet, and they're sitting down 20 to 30 feet. 80 feet of water, 20 to 30 feet down suspended, okay? What starts to happen, remember that we talked about at Long Lake, that bay, all the weeds? Well, there's a deep break there, correct? And if you get on the outside of that, what do you got? Most of our weeds around here are cabbage, guys. And if you're not familiar with cabbage, Cabbage grows up 15, 25 feet. It's a single stalk with broad leaves like this. Okay? When it gets all the way to the surface, it gets a little tiny kind of a diamond-shaped pad on it. Looks like that. Prime 
crappie real estate. Okay. So what happens, this is our cabbage now, right here. Now you get out there at midday, and you say, well, Seth told me that I fished these guys shallow, and I went through, and now I gotta come out here, all right? Now it's not uncommon, guys, to catch more fish in the daytime in the spring. Okay, let me just get that out right now. You can go out there in the springtime and catch them all day. Okay, it's not all light driven in the spring. Does it help like it for Nan? Yeah, it does. But all day long they'll bite in that spring period when they're going through the pre-spawn. Because it's pre-spawn, they need to feed. The female's got to put protein in to brood the eggs, so on and so forth. All right? The male, he's eating because he knows he's going to be sitting on a nest for three weeks. Here's what happens when it gets finicky. How many people have a hard time catching big fish in the summer, be it any species? Okay? Generally everybody catching the smaller stuff. Well, the preconceived notion with panfish is they're warm water fish. I gotta be up shallow under the docks two or three feet. Well, that's the first problem. All you're gonna see up there is the little tiny stuff. That's what you know, it's not what you want to catch. Okay? These fish pull off into here. You come in here midday. And guys, this could be uh, cabbage. Uh, Long Lake is notorious for big down trees and 25, 30 feet of water, prime. That's fine too, okay? Rock bluffs can be great in Long Lake. There's several of those, okay? Hayden Lake, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see cabbage. You'll see cabbage at Long, but don't pass up a deep tree or a rock bluff, okay? Somewhere close to these spawning grounds, all right? So here's what happens, you come in and you're fishing in the daytime and you're drop shot and you're doing your thing or you're, uh, you're throwing a bobber with a, a crappie jig on it, whatever, Seth told me suspended, great, whatever it may be. All right, you fish all day long and you get frustrated at about six o'clock and you say, Psst, I'm out of here, okay? Go to work, work till six, make your money, come home, eat your dinner, Hook up the boat, launch your boat at 7 o'clock, it's cool because it's light till 10, right? You get out there and fish from 7 o'clock at night until it gets dark, you'll catch more crappie in that three hour window than you will sitting there all day long. Reason being is, not that you can't catch them, it's because you're fishing right here. Well Seth told me this deep cabbage. Those fish may be out here 50, 60 yards this way, out here in open water. They're just sitting out there suspended. You come in with your graph on, and you'll see them down there. So if you want to fish them in the daytime, which I don't recommend it because it's hot in the summer, okay? If you want to fish them in the daytime, middle of the day, what you're going to do is this. And guys, I have video of this on my camera, and it's just amazing to see, underwater camera. I can drop my underwater camera out there at Hayden Lake, any of these cabbage beds, drop it down here, and I can drive around this edge and I won't see one crappie. I won't see one. I'll see perch, I'll see bass, I won't see one crappie. As Soon as that sun gets low, around that seven o'clock time frame, it's like the herd coming. And it's just, I mean, it is a swarm of crappie that just show up. Those fish were not there. I just went across this. They were not there. Well, it's because they're moving in from out in this deeper water. Okay? They're suspending fish. They're pulling in to feed in low light conditions. Now, their eye is not as sensitive as a walleye, but they do prefer the low light. So in the summertime, please make a habit of going out. Right, Chad? Oh, yeah. Okay, Chad went out. Take a boy crop and go out, Chad, go out in the evening time late. Seth, it's like clockwork. I mean, it, if it's not 7 o'clock, it ain't happening. Okay? So always fish the evening or get up early in the morning. That's why ice fishing, early in the morning. I always get my crop early. Well, early in the season when the ice is thin, the light's getting through, still low light conditions. Okay? So off these deep weed breaks. Now something... Bait-wise, guys, um, you know, I'm not a big guy that stresses bait all the time, lures, whatever. Because if you understand the fish and you find them and you understand why they want to feed and where they want to be, then there's a lot of baits that'll work. There's thousands of baits that'll work. All of my best crappie are caught on either leeches, 
or minnows. Okay? When you think of crappie, you have a preconceived notion to think panfish, bluegill, little maggots. Okay? If I go out crappie fishing with you, and you got night crawlers sitting in your boat, I'm going to just throw them out. Night crawlers, I, I have had crappie in aquariums before as a kid. You drop a night crawler in there, they just watch it go to the bottom. The little small mouth or large mouth, whatever it be at the time I had in there, he comes over and sucks that worm up no problem. What do we use for bass baits? We use everything, but they like worms, right? You throw a goldfish in the tank, it's game on. I mean, they would come up to the tank, the crappie, when they'd see me walk in the house with my container of goldfish, and they get excited. Dad's going to feed us. Because they like minnows. Okay? Don't think of a crappie as this little subtle fish with this, you know, he's got a little mouth. They've got a big mouth on them. Feed them minnows. Feed them bigger stuff. All right? In the spring and the summertime, you can catch them good on minnows. Okay? And when I say summertime, that's up until about July. Now, what will have happen, and you walleye guys will know this, okay? In the hot part of the year, end of July through August, and sometimes into September we see it, you switch over to the leeches. Reason being, a leech is like a salmon. Sounds weird. They live 12 to 18 months, spawn and die, okay? Well, that July, August, into September... That is when the leeches are spawning. They're congregated. You'll start to catch bass that'll have leeches on them a lot of times in the summertime. Okay? So by switching over to that leech, just like leeches in the summertime, right? Am I right, guys? I mean, you can catch walleyes on leeches all year, but summertimes they work good off the deep pumps, right? It's the same principle with the crappie. We catch big bass drop shot and leeches out there doing the same thing. Bass is going to eat them. It's an abundant food source. Remember? The coronamids. Well, now that's the abundant food source. The mayflies for walleye, big old walleye going around taking mayfly larvae because it's an abundant food source, readily available. So switching your bait from a minnow presentation to a leech presentation late in summer gets you a lot more fish. Chad? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Keep up with that. Now, you can go out, guys. And it's a kick in the pants. You're not going to catch as many as you will drop shotting. The benefit of drop shot is you can put two hooks on there with two leeches or two minnows. I've got a show on it. I'll pull them out two at a time, Hayden Lake. And you can get your limit real quick. Okay? It's kind of hard to do that with a crankbait. A fun bite is to go out with a beetle spin, which we've been using since we were this tall, right? First spinnerbait we ever used, beetle spin. You can go out with small husky jerker paulas. Okay? And you can cast light line, four pound test, light action rod, and work these areas and catch them. Okay. Now, when I'm working a, a bed in the summertime, <coughs> when I talk about it on that show, when we did that show out at Hayden, guys, there's literally a bed like this. And what I'm looking for, when you, when you go back into the back end of Sportsman's or any of those bays you go into, I don't care what bay it is, as you go back into those bays, what happens? We got cabbage, right? Typically, you got a steep drop coming across here, right? Break. Because where the water breaks and start to get deep, what happens? It's too deep for things to photoprocess. The vegetation stops. As you go further in, what happens back in here? Unfortunately, we've got all that milfoil and stuff. What you want to do is you come into any of these bays, I don't care if it's Hayden, if you're going Long Lake, like there at Willow, the Big Bend, where all the dollar pads are at, whatever. Where you start to come up on deep water, you want to find the cabbage bed out here, and it doesn't have to be the biggest. You want to find the cabbage bed that is as close to that drop off as you can. The furthest bed out is going to harbor the most fish. Okay? Now, why is that? If there's a bed here, and this is our drop here, and then there's one in here another 400 yards, what does that take to get there? Energy. Remember how we taught in the spring they just move a little ways up off those deep places, feed and go back? 
They don't want to, they're sitting out here in open water. They're going to go in 50, 60 yards, get on this cabbage bed, and feed on all the forage that's in there, be it leeches, minnows, whatever. They don't want to swim all the way back in. Everybody keeps going all the way back in. In the dead of winter, Chad and I, bass show out at Hayden Lake, 38 degrees, catching bass and pike, ice floating on the water, fishing the furthest beds out, adjacent to the deep water. They want to come in there, do their thing, and move back out. Okay, they're not going to swim great distances. 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. These are the things that help you find that 10%, the percentage triangle, finding that deep water that's close to shallow water, finding a cabbage bed that's close to deep water, all right? To cut down the space, you have to take that lake and dissect it and cut it down and say, I should be here, here, and here. Not just working aimlessly, all right?